So you guys know I love Joe Dispenza, and in this video, we're going to see exactly how to reprogram your whole being in seven days only. Most people wake up in the morning and start to think about their problems. Those problems are connected to certain memories, and those memories are connected to certain people and things. Your brain is like an old tape recorder that plays back to you the same cassette over and over every day. If your brain is the record of the past, then the moment you start your day, you are already thinking and living in the past. Each one of your memories has emotion, and the emotions are the final product of past experiences. So the moment you recall the memories of your problems, all of a sudden you feel unhappy, you feel sad, you feel pain. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. In other words, it creates your character. If your entire state of being when you start your day is in the past, it means your past, sooner or later, will become your future. For example, something that happened yesterday made you angry. Today you wake up and think about it, and you feel angry again. Keep doing this for two days and people will think you are having a bad day. Keep doing it for one week and people will think you're in a bad mood. If you continue long enough, soon anger will become part of your character. You will be known as someone who is always angry. So as you can see, your thoughts have something to do with your destiny. This means if you keep thinking in the past, you're going to keep creating the same life. Without even realizing, you keep creating the same life that you don't even like. Here's how it usually happens. You wake up and grab your cell phone. You check your Instagram, check your WhatsApp, read a few emails or texts. Then you check the news and now you finally feel really connected to everything that's known in your life. After that, you go through a series of routine behaviors. You get out of bed on the same side, you go to the toilet, you get a cup of coffee in your favorite cup, you take a shower, you get dressed, and you take the same bus or drive to work the same way. Finally, you get to work and you see the same people that push the same emotional buttons. When the work is done, you hurry back home to do the same things all over again tomorrow. This becomes your routine. And routine works like a computer program, and now you have lost your free will to a program. It is no longer you who runs the show, but the subconscious program. 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a memorized set of behavior. So this is why I say, first of all, don't even check your phone as soon as you wake up in the morning. Don't even think as soon as you wake up in the morning. Just be present in the moment. And that's why it's very powerful. As soon as you wake up, you go and you pray. You go and you pray Fajr. So wake up, waking up during Fajr is very, very powerful. Or even before Fajr is even more powerful. Why does it say that you have lost your free will to a program? Because now, because you've almost like constricted yourself to a routine, now you'll keep doing the same thing over and over again to the point that now you can't even stay in the present. You're basically behaving like a robot. You're behaving, behaving like a computer. So even if you have a job right now or you have... Like you're going to school and then you're waking up every single day. It's like a routine. Try to be like present with your routine. If you're going and you're brushing your teeth, literally be present when you're brushing your teeth. You realize like the very first time that you were taught to brush your teeth, you were actually present. But because you've done it so many times, you stopped being present. So you're brushing your teeth like this, but your mind is just somewhere else. Where is your mind in? In that moment, usually it's just thinking about the problems that you had in the past. You're thinking about, oh man, I'm still lacking money. Oh man, I'm still like constricted with my bills. I still have to pay my bills. Oh man, I have to do this, I have to do that. You keep thinking those same exact things. When in reality, that's why I say, don't be thinking. Don't be thinking, bro. brother. Get like, just stop thinking because most of you guys don't even know how to think. And because you don't know how to think, you keep doing it over again in the wrong way. When I say thinking, the proper thinking, I'm talking about tafakkur. So when you're sitting down and you're contemplating about things, that's a good thing. But when you're constantly, like your mind is just in the background, you have like multiple tabs open in your mind and you keep, this keeps stealing energy from you. And that's why you're always feeling tired. So the best thing to do is just don't think at all. Be present in your think, in, in whatever act that you're doing. Only think when you're contemplating, when you're proactively thinking, but never just keep your mind thinking like in the background, like a tab that's open in your computer. No longer you who runs the show, but the subconscious program. 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a memorized set of behaviors, emotional reactions, unconscious habits, hardwired attitudes, beliefs, and perceptions that function like a program. 
So then you can. And this is very sad, by the way, because at this moment, if you're, if we're basically behaving like a robot or a computer, then you're, you're not really open up to the unknown. So let's just say something happened that's like random to your life, to your day, something unknown that happened to your day. Someone came and talked to you. Because this thing goes against the program that you that you're used to, you're gonna get pissed off. Or let's just say you're asleep and then something happened where your brother called you he's like, come for an emergency, and then you go for an emergency. You're gonna get so annoyed because that's not within your routine. When in reality, what if that same thing that happened to you that's random, that's unknown, is Allah's way of accepting your dua, the dua that you've been making, whatever dua that you've been making. But because you're so conditioned to your program, because you're so conditioned to your routine. You don't want to respond to it. And you, not just that you don't want to respond to it, you get annoyed of it. And then as a result, you just don't want to do it. When in reality, that right there was the call for your dua. So the things, that's why Rumi says, the things that come to annoy you, those things are coming to teach you. Whatever you get annoyed of, or you get triggered by, those things are coming to teach you. Because the only reason why you're getting annoyed of it is because it's unknown. You're not used to it. It's something unfamiliar. So then you can say, with your 5% conscious mind, I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. I want to be free. But the body is run by a different program. You are putting the 5% conscious mind against the subconscious mind, which is 95%. This is like putting an average skinny guy against an Olympic level power lifter in a weightlifting competition. No wonder you can't make changes and end up going back to the old program and creating the same life. So then how do you begin to make changes? Well, you have to get beyond the analytical mind because what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. Think of it like the analytical mind. That's basically the beta brainwave. So this is like the bridge between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. The way for you, and I'll tell you in simple terms, especially if you're a Muslim, the way for you to access the subconscious mind, where this is where your habits are in, your beliefs are in, those automatic behaviors are in, the way for you to cross this bridge is through relaxation, through surrender. When you relax every single muscle of your body, when you make every single muscle in your body submit to Allah, when you make your mind submit to Allah, when you reach a state of stillness, this is how you can reach the subconscious mind. And then once you reach the subconscious mind, this is where you have access to all those hidden things that you don't usually see. The more you put your awareness on these hidden things that you don't usually see, the more that you start to change, the more that your personality starts to, starts to change. And this is a beautiful process, but it's going to take a lot of energy, which is so paradoxical. It's going to take a lot of energy for you to just relax. <laughs> and that's where meditation comes in. Through the see? practice of meditation, you can learn how to change your brain waves and slow them down. And when you do that properly, you can enter the operating system where you can begin to make fundamental changes. Most people wait for a crisis, trauma, disease, or diagnosis in order to start changing. Joe does and Habibi, this is the saddest thing ever. This is the saddest thing ever because most people, they, they can't change until something on the outside, something bad on the outside comes and happens to them. And then as a result, they change. Like I remember, by the way, like most teenagers, or not teenagers, like most young people, they're so impulsive and they're so lazy at the same time that they won't change until, until something bad happens to them. Like if you're someone who goes to university, until your parents get a disease, until your whatever, like your fake girlfriend leaves you, if well, until you start to get kicked out of school, then you start to change seriously or sincerely. But I'm telling you, you don't need to wait for a crisis to come and then you change. You don't need to wait for something bad happens to you and then you change. You can just do it right now. That's why I say like this process of meditation is so powerful. Don't even call it meditation, bro. Call it dhikr. Call it surrendering to Allah. Call it being a Muslim. Like you guys have forgotten so much on how to be a Muslim because you're, you're, you've gone through this routine that you have in your life. Being a Muslim, you have to be a Muslim in every single moment. And every moment you're sitting down and you're reminding yourself, Allah is always here. La ilaha illallah. Put all your attention on Allah. Just putting your attention on Allah by default is going to, relax you that's going to take you from beta to alpha and then as a result you can relax as a result you can change all these fake beliefs that you have all these fake programs that you've accumulated all these years that you have benz's message is this why wait for negative things to happen you can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering or you can learn and change in a state of joy 
and inspiration. Most people spend 70% of their life living in survival. They live in stress. So they're always anticipating the worst case scenario based on past experience. They literally choose the negative things out of the infinite potential in the quantum field. They're selecting the worst possible outcome. This is like looking at the... Well, what does that mean? This whole quantum field thing. Most Muslims, when they hear that, they, they just say, ah, the word quantum and the word field is not in Islam. Habibi, Allah has written everything for you. Everything you can think of, Allah has written it for you. So Allah has written for you to be poor and Allah has written for you to be, to be rich. All of these things. So every possibility exists because it's been written. It's just Allah has given you this power as a human being, as the Khalifa on the earth. Which scenario do you want to be in? That's the thing. And you pick through your attention. So if you're running by the, the, the routine, the robotic program, if you're running constantly through that in every single moment of the day, then you're putting your attention on the past. On the past. And because you're putting your attention on the past, you're creating the same future. That's why you'll go through every single day like it's yesterday. Every single day like it's yesterday. And I believe Shams Tabrizi, he said something like, what worse failure for you to have than for your day to, to look like the same exact day that you've had yesterday. Now, basically, what he's talking about is what worse failure for you to have than to not be in the present moment. Because when you're not in the present moment, you're living from the past, man. You're not even here. Your body is here, but your mind is somewhere else. And you, you've, you've, your, your brain has tricked you into thinking that you're here. When in reality, when you increase your awareness, you'll realize, like, I'm not even here, man. And that's why you'll see failed businesses, failed jobs, failed relationships, because you're not even here. You're nowhere to be found. <laughs> a menu with an endless amount of food and drinks and choosing the worst possible option. This is how it happens. Every time you recall the negative event, you produce the same chemistry in your brain and body as if the event is occurring again. You are sending the same emotional signals to the body. Your body is your unconscious mind in a sense. Your body doesn't know the difference. Your body thinks that the event is actually happening right now. Most people are constantly recreating their negative emotional states by constantly thinking about them. So when it comes time to give up that negative emotion, they can say, I really want to change. But the problem is that the body is stronger than the mind. The body has been conditioned for years to negative emotions. The body was a servant once, but now has become the master. All of a sudden, when you decide to change and step into that unknown, the body doesn't like it. The body would rather feel guilt and suffering because it feels familiar and it can predict it. Being in the unknown is a scary place for the body. Entering into the unknown is like stepping into a deep river. The body knows that if you succeed in passing to the other side of the river, it will die. It will do anything it can to stop you. By the way, replace the word body with mind. They're the same thing. When Joe Dispenza is talking about in this case, it's the same exact, exact thing. And by the way, this robot is actually talking a script from Joe Dispenza through a speech that he had. So understand as well, there's this thing called epigenetics, which Joe Dispenza talks about. And we think that epigenetics, basically all that it means is that you have all the genes in your body. It's just that your body picks and chooses which one to silence and which one to activate. So there's no such thing as junk DNA in your body, by the way. But it does that through your environment. And so we think that our environment is just the things on the outside. When in reality, that's not the case. Your environment is also the way you feel on the inside. Your chemistry on the inside. So even think of it right now. Like if you just think of a thought. Like if you're laying down right now and you're thinking that an intruder came into your house and you're going there and then you killed him, right? Let's just say you're thinking like that you literally start to feel the adrenaline coming in your body. It's funny because I was doing that the other day and I was like, hmm, how am I going to kill him? I'm like, how am I going to protect the family? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Every man thinks like that. Come on. But when you're thinking like that, your adrenaline is going up so high. And so just the fact you, you've basically, like you've invoked a chemical response in your body just through thought alone. And that is very powerful. So just through that, you're changing your body. And there's been so many studies about how if you just go through it, like you're sitting down and you close your eyes and you think of your body like contracting, your muscle contracting, there are studies that say just th through you thinking like that, you're actually growing the muscle, which is insane. If you're playing the piano, just through you visualizing the piano, having like a meditation where you're seeing yourself playing the piano, 
touching every single key, you're going to be able to play the piano better when you go in it physically and actually do it, which is insane. This is actually insane because what's happening is that you're changing the body through thought alone. How is it working? Through epigenetics. That's how it's working. Because through thought alone, you're producing a chemical response in your body, and this chemical response is changing your body. This is why I say it's like healing through the mind alone is very possible. So if you are sick right now, understand you've, you've gotten sick because of your mind. The mind and the environment. So don't be thinking they're separate. They're the same thing. So the, the food that you're eating is also the environment. The way that you're feeling is also the environment. So you got to be fixing both. You can't just be fixing the outside and then the inside, you don't even care about it. You still think negatively. You still feel negatively. That's not going to do anything. But when you change this and the outside, that's how you see a great, like such fat result, fast result as well. This is why the moment you start meditating, suddenly your nose starts scratching. You remember an important task you had to do and out of nowhere, you get a memory from 20 years ago. This is your body saying, come on, just give up and let's go back to our old miserable life. The body has a lot of tools and it will use every single one of them to stop you from entering the unknown. The unknown is the best place to create your future. And the easiest way to enter the unknown is through meditation. One by the way, by the way, entering the unknown is like dying for the mind, for the ego. And that's why there's a hadith that says, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Die before you die. Die before you die. What it means is the ego, we're not really killing it. We're going past it. You're going past the ego. You're going past the mind and you're going past the body. Just you doing that is like, it's literally like you achieving enlightenment because now you've entered through the unknown and now you're living through the present moment. So this is why Allah says, Al-Muttaqeen, the people who have taqwa, Allah is going to give them risk from where they don't even expect because when you're, living through the present moment, through the unknown, you're not expecting anything. You're not expecting anything. You're not predicting anything. You're just living through the world and Allah is just almost like you're watching a movie that you've never seen before and you're not predicting before. You're not predicting anymore. And that's a beautiful state to be in because Allah is going to start giving you so much in your life that you don't even expect. And then you'll just be left there thinking like, wow, who would have thought that this was possible? I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have ever been able to create such things in your in my life but the only way for you to do that is by living in the present moments by getting past the body and the mind once you are in a deep meditative state you can start creating your future what kind of new life do you want what behaviors do you want to demonstrate what kind of person do you want to be the act of mentally closing your eyes and rehearsing the things or behaviors you want in your life is the best way to create your future if you're truly present the brain does not know the difference between imagination and real life experience. Through the act of imagination, you are installing the software programs of your future life. Now your brain is no longer a record of the past. It's a map to the future. And if you keep doing it, who knows? You may just start acting like a happy person. The hardest part is to teach your body emotionally what the future will feel like ahead of the actual experience. Simply imagining it isn't enough. You need to emotionally feel it in your body. If thoughts are the language of the brain, feelings are the language of the body. It is through feelings and emotions your body understands what your mind is telling you. If you don't feel anything, then it means your body isn't receiving the signal. It's like in your room. The internet modem is working, but you can't connect because you've turned off the Wi-Fi on your phone. The moment you start feeling the emotions of your thoughts, you are connected to the internet and you can now start downloading your future life. And you know what this means? This means you no longer need to wait for your success to happen in order to feel successful. You don't need to wait for wealth to feel abundant. You don't need to wait for your new relationship to feel love. According to the quantum model of reality, the moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. The moment you start to feel it, you're beginning to step toward your future. Now this means you are becoming the creator of your future. You're no longer living as a victim and saying things like, I'm this way because of this person or that person or this experience. Unfortunately, today many people are victims of their own negative thoughts from the past. Most people don't realize it, but here's the thing about thoughts. 
Just because you have a thought, it doesn't mean it's true. Let me repeat, just because you have a thought, it doesn't mean that you should act on it. On average, you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before. If your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, then your life is not going to change very much because the same thought leads to the same choices. The same choice leads to the same behavior, the same behavior creates the same experience, and the same experience produces the same emotion. This is why it's very important to meditate so that you can become more aware of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. The more conscious you are, the less likely that an unwanted thought is going to slip by your awareness unchecked. The word meditation means to become familiar with. So as you become familiar with the thoughts, behaviors, and emotions of the old self, you no longer let them influence you. Instead, you start thinking new thoughts and condition the body into a new emotional state. If you do it long enough, this new emotional state will become familiar to you. Creating a new self is like creating a new garden. First, you got to get rid of the weeds and the rocks. Then you need to pull out the plants from the past year and you have to prepare the soil. Only after that, you can start planting. Meditating basically works the same way. You're preparing the garden and it's not an easy job. Training your body to sit down and meditate is like training a wild animal or a dog. You say, sit down and wait here. But it runs away, so you catch it and bring it back. But of course, it runs away again and you have to catch it and bring it back again. The moment you start a meditation, the body says, hey, it's eight o'clock. You normally read emails and get angry around this time. But here you are sitting and doing nothing. You're off schedule. What is going on? For years, we have been angry together around this time, but all of a sudden you're going to change just like that. So the body starts sending signals. The body is basically looking for that predictable chemical state, and it doesn't care that it's a toxic state. Every time you become aware of what your body is doing and bring attention to the present moment, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind and you are the mind. And now your will is getting greater than the program. And if you keep doing this over and over again, over and over again, just like a trained dog, the body will sit down and obey. The moment the body surrenders, there's a liberation of energy. You go from particle to wave, from matter to energy, and you free yourself from the chains of those emotions that keep you in the familiar past. If you do this for just seven days, you will already start seeing differences in your life. You will start catching yourself more often and avoid going back to the old unhappy self. Of course, you need to repeat this process long enough until your future reality becomes your current reality. Hope it was a useful video. Man, the very first time I actually learned all these teachings of Joe Dispenza, I was so excited because I'm like, this fits so, like, so well with the teachings of Islam. But for some reason, most people never go through these teachings of Islam, which is actually so sad. Like I was wishing that I'm like, if everybody knew about this, just imagine how much of a change they'll have. But the only reason why most don't know about this, because first of all, when you hear the word meditation, especially as a Muslim, you're just going to be like, ah, it's shirk, shirk, meditation is shirk. Or if it's, yeah, it's bid'ah. When in reality, all it is is just dhikr. That's all it is, Habibi. It's just dhikr. You're sitting down and you're remembering Allah. That's why Allah says, wala dhikrullahi akbar. And the whole analogy of think of your mind like a garden, you got to take away the weeds, prepare the soil, then you plant. This is all it is. You relax first, you get aligned with the will of Allah, and then you start planting. Like, what do you want in that point? That's why Allah says, when my servant gets closer to me through the obligatory acts, I become the eyes in which he sees with, the ears in which he hears with, to the end. And then he says, to the point that if he wants anything, we just say, kun fayakun. So then any, anything you want just happens instantly. And then when, you, when you're constantly getting to a state of gratitude, you'll keep seeing your life like just increase more and more in goodness. And it's so beautiful. So this is why I made this whole course, the Effortless Rizq course, because I saw these teachings. And I'm like, how come no one's ever teaching this? The ones that know this, they can create unlimited wealth, unlimited and effortless wealth. Like there, There's no way. There's no way that you can't do it. And it's so beautiful. So if you're interested in that course, just click the link in the description. There's a whole video that you'll see exactly. I teach you three things that are within the Quran that you just do them once and you'll see the effect of them happening. Seven days, I think it's even earlier than seven days, inshallah, if you truly do it properly.
But uh, I'm hoping this whole video is helpful, man. If it was, just let me know.